I got myself into. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Yeah, I love the little uh, the little helper on the steering wheel there. Yeah. Well, one thing about it, if you wind up cutting it up, you ain't ruining nothing that way. Oh yeah, she a beauty. Old fireball. <laughs> Look at that hand crank. Still in there. The hand crank's still in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a good motor, Mike. Anyway, yeah. I've seen a lot of guys just leave that. And we'll just leave it rotted out and drop it right down over the car and let the rust hang down. Be proud of your rust. Look at that rolling pleated seat. Heck, that's fancy work right there, buddy. Oh, she's a beauty. Bullet holes in the windshield. <laughs> it's supposed to crank out this windshield. Oh, look, it's air operated. Does it have air brakes on it? Yeah. Oh, that's honking. <laughs> Got little gauges on the air handle. Look at the doorknob on this thing. <laughs> and look at that two-speed transmission with the little shifter knob on the side of it right there. Yeah. Oh, the key's in it, Mike. Yeah, I'm surprised you left the key in it. You know, somebody could have drove it off. That is some cool piece of... You have to leave that little crank handle on the dash here when you put it in your hot rod. <laughs> I might be able to fix it. Old Chevrolet sign. Yeah. Get this while we're all back together. Uh -huh. and a piece of bar across it. Uh -huh. That's gonna be great. <laughs> That's gonna be great. Yeah, we could uh, we could put the trailer right up to it, put the ramps on it, get to come along. Or I've got a two and a half ton chain hoist, and we could hoist that baby right up on the trailer, and then once we got it to your house, you could cut it up or drag it off or do whatever you want to do as far as having it. But then you wouldn't have to worry about the cab coming apart. I was thinking probably chop it. Well, you could chop it, but I'm not sure that it would, uh, I'm not sure it would make it any easier to load because just by chopping it up, you're just going to have more pieces if you drug the whole thing up on the trailer and hauled it all at once. You'd be done with it. Uh, and, if, and if these front tires will roll, if they're not locked up, then uh, because they're probably flat, but I, you can still drag it up on there. What have I got myself into? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what have you got yourself into? I don't know. See how she goes. <laughs> <laughs> I got a set of coffin wheels that I used to put my 
rat rod on back when I was uh, working on it. So I'm gonna go down there and take them down and help him get the get his in the garage and get up on them wheels and stuff. I was just telling Trish I hadn't heard from him in a week or two, and you know the way it is with hot rod guys. Uh, you know you go a uh, week or two without working on your hot rod, and it causes chemical reactions. You know you get like acetone in your bloodstream, and you get that reddish tinge to your eyeballs. You know, and your, and the air in your system gets oxidized, and you get to where you just can't. Just, you know, things just ain't working right. You have to get out in the garage, get the smell of burning metal in your nose to reinvigorate yourself. You know, and that's that's about where Mike is right now. So I'm gonna go down and help him. We go probably both get reinvigorated. I didn't do any hot rod work this weekend either, so we can both use a dose. It'd be good for us. I make us feel real. <laughs> my way over to Mike's house. I'll go ahead and share this too. I'm taking my A-model axle with the big green spoke wheels with me over to Mike's house. I was thinking we could set his uh, cap uh, up on those dollies that I'm taking, those coffin dollies. We could set that uh, A-model axle with those wheels in front of it and put his hood and grill in front of that. He's got a big set of uh, 50 series tires we can set in the back and we kind of get us a rough mock-up of what we think that thing would look like once we get it finished. I think that'd be wicked cool. Get some pictures of it like that. Hey. <laughs> I figured I'd be too late to get in on the fun. <laughs> it wasn't fun. Yeah? I couldn't get my track. It didn't hit far enough to, yeah. to uh, I couldn't get it in here far enough for the tractor because the tractor was too high. Yeah? So I had to drop it right there and then I had to get the rollers on the back. Yeah? And then I could get I had to jack it along so I could on snap. Yeah. When you get those dollies, we'll make something that rolls good. That yeah. probably rolls pretty rugged right there. <laughs> I'm already liking it, buddy. Oh, just leave that. Suck it when I'm Just look at it. <laughs> you got two tires in the back? Yeah. Let's do a walk around. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Got to use your imagination back here just a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. I'm shooting. You want to talk about what you got so far for pieces and parts? Um, frame it. I've got everything to build the frame, which is the next step. Um, use the original radiator. That's all in good shape. Um, in the process of purchasing a 283, three speed standard behind it. Nothing wrong with that. Um, nine inch forward rear end, which I picked up. I haven't one got yet. Yeah. I've got a 19. 50s, early 50s, late 40s, shovel A front end, which I'm going to change over to basically cut all the springs out and mount it. Yeah. Suicide. Yeah. Um, that original steering box, all still good shape when you use that. Yeah. Um, that's about yeah. I'm going to get, I'm just going to build it basic. Yeah. You know, basic as possible. <laughs> Wicked fun. Oh yeah, that's a good view there. I have to get a couple of shots. That's it. 
Oh yeah. So there's the frame. You already been out here working on it, hadn't you? No. No? Okay. That's just the way I got it. Scrap. It's good looking scrap. <laughs> Yeah. Mounts. Yeah. Got that tubing all ready to go in. Pretty sweet. Steering box over here all cleaned up, ready to go. It'll be mounted on top of the frame. That's where the front end's going to be way lower, so. Uh-huh. I've got the factory box out of the truck all oh, cleaned up. And that looks good. And, uh. Works good. Everything works good on us. Of course, it's a two and a half ton truck, right? Awesome. And then I kept the part of the frame that the steering box is mounted to. Yeah. And then when I get done, it'll be like, when I get my cab all in place and everything, I'll mount it right on top of my tube in with some gussets and my steering box in there. Yeah. And that way I've got everything original and honking. <laughs> That's honking, Mike. Front ends out of line a little bit. <laughs> wait, till, wait till Tish sees that one, huh? <laughs> what? Wait till your wife sees that kitchen. Well, I've been gone for a few days. While I was on vacation, Mike was over there in his garage welding up his frame. He called me before I got back to let me know he'd been working on it and to talk about how to set up the front end and this and that. So as soon as I got back, one of the first things I did was hop in my little hot rod and uh, head over to his house and uh, scope it out. And this is it. He's got it uh, all set up to the front, front to the back with a good size Z in the back of it. And uh, he's got a front end there that he's working on figuring out how to get up under there. In fact, let me uh, let me get you where you can have a, a little look at. The, well, here he goes. He's oh yeah. He also found these cool old spoke wheels. I think these might be 18-inch wheels. But uh, we were looking at it and measuring it. It looks like they might fit uh, Chevy, uh, Chevy lug pattern. So that's a pretty good possibility that that might wind up on the hot rod somewhere. I'm figuring 57 to 58 Chevy pickup. Yeah. So then uh, everything seemed real good, like when I tore this last part. All the spindle seemed fine. Yeah. All the bears are nice and greased up and everything looks good on it. And yeah. I am going to swap it over to disc brakes. As far as the frame goes, I still got a box in all the ends. Uh huh. And everything. How long did it take you to put the frame together once you got started? You said you did that pretty quick, didn't Probably you? about eight hours. Uh -huh. I cut the plate out of the skin and out of the original frame. Yeah. Right now I got it just mounted kind of back with this part. It's experimenting, but. If I put it. That's what where I planned on doing it and welded to the outside of the frame, the original yeah. frame part, and that's where it would set approximately in that area. Yeah. It's a matter of how much clearance I got to my motor. Right. As far as mounting on me, you can't really, there's not a lot I can do there. Unless I build some kind of a box or plate that comes up. Yeah. Hard to set all this stuff up, ain't it? Yeah, I can't really do much until I get you molders just, in. And yeah, you just kind of have to imagine it, almost. I've done a lot of measuring, yeah. so I know kind of, I know where everything lays. And when I built this frame, I did it purposely. It's uh, right across here, I got a mark. Yeah. That's where the cab is going to, the front of the cab is going to set. Yeah. So when I built it, I made it so this will slip right past here. It would just be... Just a smidgen tight. Yeah. And it will come right past this part. Right. And this part will go down beyond the frame. Right. 
and that way I can build my mounts off the side of the frame if I want to drop this down four inches I can drop it four inches right That's, I started cleaning it up a whole lot of wheel. yeah all kinds of little holes coming everywhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what I mean but yeah and I did get this working and that was a nightmare getting it to work but got that vent to work I got that to work now well, cool. it did work last time I used yeah. It wouldn't work before, but it works now. <laughs> That's good. This is a trick I learned in one of the rat rod books. Okay. This guy did it to a car he got and he said the hinges were no good in the car at all. Right. So these are completely rotted, which mine is to the bottom one, both of them. Yeah. So he just Took a big set of hinges and put them right on there. He spliced, he cut this out. Yeah. Mount the hinges to the back of the door. Walked yeah. them to the door. Yeah. Whoops. And then he, once he got them in there and everything, he walled them to the C pillar and he pin pop right out. These are regular right. door hinges. Right. Show how suicide doors. Yeah. So he just cut all this off, walled it in, and yeah. then the doors open the opposite way. So yeah. I'm going to do it. The worst part is finding the hinges wide enough to do it. Right. And these are these are actually come out and they're bent like this, so I had to bang them down straight. That yeah. gives you a knot there. Right. But a regular door. In the rat rod book, the guy says, I just went to the hardware store and got a regular set of door hinges, household door hinges. Right. But they don't go far enough in to do it, so you gotta have something quite wide. Otherwise you don't have nothing to weld to. Yeah. So that gives you plenty there. Cool. So that's my next experiment. Yeah. <laughs> Suicide doors. Yeah, you can do it. This, the reason why this is going in primer right now is because I've got a paint scheme. It's going to be a flat primer truck, but I'm doing it because my father, this is basically kind of the memory of my father. Ever since we were little kids, my father always used to drink Moxie. Uh-huh. And we picked up drinking Moxie for my father. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some primer tempted to the color of a Moxie can. Right. And that's what color this truck's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to paint it something like that. Yeah. <laughs> In memory of my father. So. Yeah. A lot of people, oh, I'll leave it rusty, but I think she's going to be flat, primered orange. Yeah. <laughs> Everything in place here, there, and everywhere. So I've got to drop. I've got actually got to cut that radius support behind you and yeah. drop it down, but it's going to ride over that axle. Yeah. I'd like to get it just about that low. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Because I do want to use this front end. Yeah. Moxie orange. <laughs> I did weld that up together. Yeah. Where it was broken. Yeah. I'm not doing much more to it. I'm gonna leave all this. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave all the little rust holes and stuff, except for anything that might interfere with rain coming in on me or something like on that roof. Alright. So I'll fix that. I can't believe how much he's weighing. That one in my rock and they don't weigh that much. Yeah. Well that's a bell that's a bell super bell in the front of your rock. Yeah. That would be lighter. That's what I'm contending with right now. You gotta have this eight but arm to go underneath. Yeah. So everything falls down over. Yeah. Then that's got to be cut down. Might have to find another radiator. Because <laughs> I don't know if I can cut it down low enough.
That's way too high. <laughs> yeah, but you can drop it down. About two and a half inches, I figure, because of this. If this radiator didn't drop this much on this side, I could drop it more. But. Well, it looks like if you took that frame off it, you could drop it between the frame rails. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can then you can get it as low as your axle anyway. That should work. That radiator should be more than plenty if you're going to use that six cylinder out there too. Yeah, and she don't leak, and I friggin' took the. Actually, it came right loose the pet cock and yeah. fluid come out of it and everything. So that's it's, good. And it hasn't. It's never leaked. It was right full of fluid when we got it. So yeah, it should be fine. The radiator. Cool. You're gonna go with coil springs in the back, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do coils in the back and probably a set of ladder bars. Yeah. Pan hard bar. Just figured I'd give it a softer ride. That's all in the back. Sure. That's what I'm worried about. Those the uh, front end. I don't want to have anything bottoming out on there. Yeah. Cool. It's like fifty-nine dollars for a uh, for a spring out of Speedway. So that ain't bad. Slipper with a slipper buttons on them. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably just order a spring out of there. It's 26 inches long. That one is eye to eye. Yeah. For a tea bucket, but it will work. Yeah, it'll work. Good deal. <laughs> you're you're doing a. Uh, what do we call it? Semi-elliptical front spring. Quarter inch semi-elliptical front spring. To mount the front axle, this is a Chevy truck axle. And you took the uh, springs that were originally on the back of the uh, pulpwood truck, right? No, these are the springs that came on this front end. Okay, so these are the springs that were originally end. on this front end. And you cut them. Yep, I cut them back here. Yep. And you Probably found... Probably swapped 60% of them is what I did. And you found this piece on... Uh, I had another front end, which was a Plymouth front end. Yeah. And I uh, just basically unbuttoned. That's the part that bolted the springs to the frame. Yeah. Cut them off. Well, look at that. Yeah, they are. Looks like it was made for it, doesn't it? Yeah. And then I took and basically I made a plate out of right here. Yeah. You see. Yeah. I'm going to weld that right to it, and I've drilled two holes down through this. So that'll be bolted and welded. Bolted and welded. Right to the axle. And, and the then I had to drill these holes out a little bit bigger for the bolt to go through. Yeah. And then basically I looked at through my junk pile and I found, found these right here. And yeah, I that's said, an old rear end spring yeah, mount. Which I had kept. Yeah. So I said, oh, it looks like it works pretty good. That's perfect, yeah. So I, that's going to be underneath. Underneath, and the, and the, bolt, and then, the bolts will go through that, and then that'll go on top. So basically, I cut this out with yeah. a torch and drilled it all out. Yeah. That will weld all the way around the frame, and I'm going to put some gussets off of it. Right. And that will be all welded solid. So So if you get this all set up, and you set the motor in there, and it goes down, and you think, geez, I've I wish I had... I've I made sure I had plenty. You got it all figured out. Yeah. I've got good tie rod clearance and everything. Yeah, so. yeah you do. And then I also been thinking I'm gonna put a pan hide bar on. So yeah, there's my bracket which came off the original spring. There you go. It was some type of a bracket that was like bolted like that somehow. I'm gonna weld that Just one way or the other. Just for curiosity, how much money you got in this frame so far? Oh, so far we're sitting here. Yeah. Twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Plus some welding, wire, and material. Yeah. <laughs> 20 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got a rear end for it too now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nine inch Ford rear end going in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call high dollar rat rod building right there. I love that. That's All this good. stuff is just like scrap length. Yeah. Basically, I, I would have had to buy a spring and everything if I was going to make it a spring right. behind. Right. But I'm saving a lot of money doing it this way. Well, and you it'd are. it be something different. Yeah, it's different and it's a cool look. I like that a lot. All right.
Alright, some of y'all might remember that Mike was in the process of working on his hot rod and uh, of course then we had the holidays come around, you know, Christmas, New Year's and this and that. Now I didn't want to be bothering him. I figured, oh, he's spending time with his family and this and that. So I didn't really go over to see what was going on. Well, he called me the other day and he's all excited. He's got the front end on it. He's got the back end on it. He's mounting up shots. He's putting on springs. And I said to myself, Holy cow, Seth, you done missed a whole lot of the building of Mike's trap rod. So I called him this morning. I said, I got to get over there and I got to film what you've been doing because I ain't getting to see it and other people's missing it too. He said, okay, come on over. I'm doing some welding, but I'll be doing a little bit. So I'm on my way over to Mike's house to get a big old general update on what's going on. I'll share it with y'all. For y'all also nice to watch and follow along, act like you're even a little bit interested. You know, you pay attention even if you don't really care. So I appreciate that. And y'all have a nice day and uh, we'll see what I got to show you next. Just look at it, Mike. Uh, <laughs> just look at it. Oh, you must be loving that. That's looking okay, isn't it? That's looking honking. <laughs> All made, custom made by me. I oh, guess. yeah? I didn't have to order nothing. How much you got in it now? Um, $75. <laughs> but, well, let me think here. Yeah, $75. Right. <laughs> basically, I made a set of trailer arms back here. It basically welded the rear end. But I used these big old heavy tie rods off of the original two and a half ton pulp truck on the front steering rods. Yeah. And what I did was made a plate and I cut the steering arm off where it beveled in and I welded it to the back here so it's got the bevel. Yeah. And there's my tie rod. Sweet. I've got adjustment. Yeah. So I can adjust it this way and that way. Yeah. And uh, I just made this out of some of the scrap pipe from a frame and yeah. boxed them all in. And then I set me up a pan hide bar here. Here's some 38 steel, made a couple of plates. Welded them all in. There's my pan hide bar, tractor to supply store. Yeah. Um, shocks came out of the same vehicle the rear end came out of and they were brand new. I just cleaned them up and painted them and yeah. I cut the top of them off because I dented the tops trying to take it off but that gives it a little bit more clearance. Yeah. Um, riding lawnmower wheel cut in half for my buckets. Riding lawnmower wheel. Yeah. <laughs> the big tire and I just I just split it. Yeah. I cut the center out of it and here's the ends of it. right in half yeah and then I just cut the middle of it out so I had my two buckets spring they're bucket. just a perfect size yeah and they're good and heavy uh-huh and then I just took a piece of plate and marked around the top of it and cut it out and uh, welded it right to the bottom of the frame and put some gussets in it yeah um, shock mount I this is a good heavy pipe right so I drilled right through it and that's my shock mount right there so if I ever replace it I just yeah. put a new bolt in yeah um, I welded these shock mounts on the back side and I welded this plate on to my bucket Yeah. so that I had them. Um, the coil spring buckets a guy gave me, they're actually stock car ones. Yeah. And he gave me the coil springs, 170 pound rate, 5 pound rated ones. Yeah. So the back end, as far as the suspension goes, is pretty much buttoned up. Yeah. Oh, that's honking. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as I get my, uh, I got a set of rolling stock wheels that once I get them on and I, I'm just going to mock up a, just going to mock up one, my top, I'm going to bolt these on and yeah. my steering arms and I'm just going to basically make a mock up bar going across so it keeps my wheel straight and I can move, kick them back and forth as I want to move it. Right. I'll put my rolling stock on it and then the cab's going on. Sweet. <laughs> once the cab's on, I can get all my mounts for my, I can cut my floor out to where I want it and drop it down and I'm going to have yeah. my nose set on it Right. and I'll get all my sheet metal lined up where I want it and then the cab comes back off again but yeah. right now it's just a matter of 
it's just a matter of I want to get the cab on and get all my cab mounts done and I, I want to channel down around the frame where I want it. And right. That was my intention to get it rolling and get the cab on it. You really put this thing together pretty quick. Huh? You really put this together pretty quick considering you're doing it pretty, you know, by yourself scratch, and, scratch and from ball. scratch and, you know, no money to speak of. No, I'm trying to stay away from a money deal right now, Christmas. <laughs> I just got over with it. Yeah. I still got to load a couple gusses from here to there. Uh -huh. I got to cut them out. Now I concentrate on the front end for a while. Yeah. And then my other plan is I'm going to take this pipe right here, what's left of this stock, and I'm going to weld it from here across, and then I'm going to find the center of it, and I'm going to cut six inches out of it. Right. And I'm going to weld a drive shaft loop right into this pipe. Right. So my drive shaft goes right through it. Yeah. But I'm going to actually, that way it will stiffen it up even more back here, and then we'll have a drive shaft loop. Yeah. I'm just going to take a piece of... I'm going to take a uh, piece of uh, 3 eighths or quarter inch bar and make my loop out of it. Mm -hmm. That's good work, Mike. It looks good. Yeah, you'll, you'll have the adjustment down on the other right. end. So you could, for a, for a radius rod, you could you could uh, make your plate like you make that cardboard there. Right. Put a hole in it, get a heavier piece of rod, put it right to that, having a have a ball joint adjustment on the other end of it. Yeah. And you'd have the spring tied here so right. that it wouldn't move. Then you'd have your radius rod up top there that you could adjust. And I'm have a radius, uh, from this bracket, I'm going to weld a yeah. bracket here. A radius rod across And I'm going to have a radius rod across the front. Yeah, to keep it. From moving Boop, side, to side. side to side. Yeah, that's gonna be a cool setup. I can't wait to see it. So that's why I saved these, and I also made enough room, and so I can put my shocks. Yeah. Down behind. Yeah. And that, then I'll weld my shock brackets up here. Yeah. Okay. That's gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to find some of them at the tractor supply shop and yeah. then I'll build my radius rods and all that. Now I'll match this spring up to this one and I'll show that it's pretty similar. I'll try to make Two semi-elliptical springs. There you go, pretty darn close. <laughs> it will be when I grind it. Yeah, get a little grinder on there and it'll be perfect. <sighs> yeah, I couldn't believe these things were so just ready just ready for the pickings. Ready, <laughs> ready made, ready to go, huh? Yeah. Can't beat that. 
between the cat, the body, and the, everything I've got for it, I've got right around 220 bucks in it. In the whole, in the whole truck? So far, yeah. <laughs> Plus I'm buying the rear end for 75, so I'll bring it up to 290 something dollars so far. Yeah. That's awesome. And that's a that's a Chevy rear end. That's a uh, Dana rear end. Okay. Dana 45. Where'd that come out of? Jeep. Okay, so you put a Jeep rear end in it. Yeah. Far out. You know the gears? This is how you can tell on the Dana. I didn't know them. Yeah. I can tell you this is like a. 350 and I know this rear end is all good because I put all brand new carrier bearings and wheel bearings and everything else in it Yeah before the Jeep went off the road, so I know everything's yeah. new and internally in it. Yeah So sweet looks like you got your front end all coming well, along there I'm coming along. I ran into troubles with that so I moved to the rear <laughs> That's what I always do when I run into trouble just go to something else Yeah, I actually welded my purchase for my trailing arms up here uh -huh. out of this half inch plate right and I had them come out with an ear here and I was gonna run them to here to run them from here back my right. trailing arms and mount them up under the frame uh -huh. and uh, I got it all welded in and then I made like a mock-up trailing arm so I could get the length of it and I went like that and made your hitting yeah so and it would have been more so with the tire on there. Right, so then I went a different route. I cut these off, took half inch plate, made two more, and yeah. moved them down here. And then on the bottom of my spring print mount, I welded this half inch plate. Yeah. Friggin' tab on there. Nice so and heavily welded. Yeah. And uh, basically goes up underneath and. Okay. That will hold my this part of the trailing arm in. Yeah, and you made the little short bar there with the adjusters on both ends. Yeah, I went to a tractor supply store and bought me a right. bar and it weren't quite long enough, so basically I found a piece of pipe that's fairly heavy. Yeah. And then I welded it together and that's yeah. the right length tie rod. There you go. That should be good. Little tip for anybody. You spend a lot less money on a tractor supply store for a lot heavier duty stuff. Yeah. It's a lot heavier than any heim joint you're going to buy in any automotive yeah. thing. And they're uh, wicked heavy. they got long threads. you got a little more adjustment. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I was going to come, uh, I, was, I wanted to come look at this during the holidays, but I figured, well, he's home, you know, with his family, and I don't want to interrupt him. And I sit around the house thinking, geez, I wonder if Mike's doing anything in a hot rod. Oh, I'm not going to call him. <laughs> So I was so um, the sun, Sunday night after Christmas I was out here working and I thought I had a welding flash and I went in the house so the next day I still had a welding flash I went to work and I came home because I didn't feel real well and then Tuesday morning I went to work and my eye was redder than red could be <laughs> and still hurt and I said this can't be a welding flash there's something else going on so I ended up coming home and I looked in the mirror and I could see a piece of something right on the pupil of my eye so I went to the emergency room and it was actually a piece of metal had melted into my eye <laughs> and uh, he's the doctor says have you ever got metal in your eye before and I said I've been welding and fabricating for since I was 15 years old and never and he says you've been lucky but when you do it you do it good <laughs> so he <laughs> so he uh, said it's melted right in there so he dug out what he could and uh, he said it was pretty deep in there so he ended up saying I better go see my eye doctor and the eye doctor the next day got the rest of it I was actually rusting in my eye I had to get <laughs> rust, the rust out of my eye and the do eye doctor says if a rust is in your eye it will never heal you know uh, instead of the junkyard dogs maybe we should call this the rusted eyeball car club <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I figured I was eyeball. cutting a piece of steel and it probably popped a piece of steel back in my eye or something when yeah. I was cutting. You know how to do that Von Dutch eyeball? Like we, <laughs> now you can, we get one of those and stick a piece of rusty metal in it, you know? <laughs> so that's what happened. <laughs> well, it didn't slow you down much. You still got a boatload of work here. It looks real good. Yeah, it looks real good. And I bought this motor off a guy who's had a Camaro. Um, 88 Camaro, um, 
said he didn't need the motor, he needed a transmission out of it. So he said the motor ran really, really good and only had 80,000 miles on it, so I gave him 100 bucks for it. So I'm not positive I'm going to use this motor in the car and off, but yeah. if I do, I'm going to have to buy an intake, distributor, older style alternator. Um, then I, I do have all the pulleys on the front to make it. You know, I had to change. I have to change all my pulleys over, which I do have. Change all that serpentine yeah, stuff. Yeah, so it's out. all. But I've got everything for that, so I'm not positive I'm going to use this motor. But my heart's set on a straight six. Yeah. Two fifty for it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm what, what I'm I'm looking at right. So now. if you don't use this one, you're going to sell it. And yeah. Put the money toward a six cylinder. Yeah. yeah. Have you found any out there? Two. I'm looking at. Yeah. There's two possibilities. Yeah. That's what I want. It's like to make it a little bit more old school and a little bit different if I do a six cylinder. Yeah, it would. And everybody's running a small block Chevy, so right. it's always nice to come up with something different. Plus, it should push it good enough. Yeah. 350 gears in it. <laughs> yeah, should go down the road just right. Once I get the front end done, then I'm going to box in all these ends of the frame where it's showing yeah. through and get this uh, this bar in with my drive shaft loop in it and yeah. then it's time for the body to go on and get all the body mounts in. I'm holding back on the motor right now. Yeah. I can pull, I can put the motor in anytime once I know where everything's setting. Sure. I am worried about my ride height for my frame, but I put this big fat 50 series tire up against this tire. Yeah. And this rear end will actually drop an actual two inches. Yeah. By putting that 50 series tire on it, she'll drop down to two inches. So I'll drop it down two inches there. Yeah. And on the front, I don't know how much it's going to settle with the engine in it. Stuff, right. So. Plus, probably some of this will settle down, but. Yeah. But I can make up all my. I can make it look really low the way I put the body on it. Sure you can. Yeah. I mean, you don't want it too low here. Right. And stuff. Yeah, that looks real good. A lot of measure, and I couldn't, I was off center on the drive shaft, the rear end, the center of the frame. Uh huh. And I lined everything up and measured it and got everything marked up into place and I said how can't why can't I get rid of it had it was a quarter of an inch that way yeah too much to center line and I said I can't find it so then I started messing around with it and I got these plates all made and then I just clamped them in place everything was clamped in place and I ended up measuring from that end to that end from here to there and from here to here uh -huh and it was off just a quarter of an inch so then I measured from back here to there and back here to there and it was only that this piece of metal right here is off a quarter just so I unloosened the clamps and slid it back one quarter of an inch yeah she's right on the money yeah <laughs> there you go everybody says well that wouldn't have bothered a quarter of an inch but I want it right perfect yeah you know if you're gonna do it get it perfect you know which is just the opposite of me. If I'm going to do it and it's perfect, there's probably something wrong with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> then I ended up measuring from here, the center of the axle, to to here and everything, and found that quart, that quarter of an inch that was where it was. You yeah. Know? Just, so I'm going to take the tape, my tape measure, throw it away when this is over. Yeah. Well, you don't need it anymore. Right? Uh -huh. You don't need it anymore. No. I wore out two tape measures already. Yeah. Yeah, I wore the numbers right off of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I'm going to use them drums. Yeah. I'm just going to order new. Yeah. That, you know, for what you're building, that's more stopping power than than you need. More than they were, I mean, this is a lot lighter than what you what this was built on. Also give it the old school look. Yeah, sure will. Yeah. But that's where we've got to so far. I mean, that's a little bit of, took me a while to figure it all out, but. Yeah. I think it's going to be a pretty good ride. Yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. Just use the drums. 
It shouldn't cost that much for a wheel cylinders. No. And a set of pads and some springs. Yeah. I'm sure. I wouldn't think. Yeah. And the bearings look fine, so I'll just clean them up and repack them. And yeah, you got the backing plates there, right? Yeah, backing plates and yeah. the whole sheet mesh. You know, if you needed to, you could uh, even rebuild the cylinders, but you probably probably won't have any trouble finding them. They look pretty hurt, you know? they, they look pretty bad. I think, I, the thing is, I can't tell exactly what your front end this is, but I, from what I can tell, it's a 57 to 58. Yeah. So, there's a part number on it, though. Well, there you go. Oh, look at that, ain't that a beauty? These probably I have to save. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. They look pretty... Can't get them out. And there's your basic, pretty simple brake setup. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Not that much to it. This will be the first semi-elliptical front end I've seen in the state of Maine. I haven't seen one in the state. And you know, it's funny up here, the whole rat rod idea, it's almost like it hadn't quite caught on. I'm hoping it'll catch on. I got a friend out in Washington State, and he sent me a video of a rat, rat rod show. They got, <laughs> but this and, is something I and see. they got a boatload of them, you know. Just recently, in some of the yeah, books, they're starting to show some of the cars, and yeah. they got these semi-elliptical front ends. On. And I like that because it's simple, and you can do it yourself. And uh, yeah, and, and I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work out you just fine. You don't have to go you know? out and buy a bunch of front end parts. You, you got, you, you know, like so far, I'm adapted everything. Yeah, you got a boatload of frame strength there. And it ain't going anywhere, so. No, once this thing is welded on there. Yep. Once this is welded on there solidly. Yeah, you get that on there and you and get then, your. And uh, then gusset it mm -hmm. on top of it all. I'm gonna put a gusset on both sides of it. Yeah. Going up. That's yeah. not going nowhere. And you get your uh, radius rods on there, good and sturdy. I mean, yeah. that's that's more that's more strength than what I got holding my front end on on that old. Uh, and then I'll have the, of course, I'll have the panhard bar there across the front. Yep. And that will keep it from. That will also hold it together, you know? Yeah. So. That's going to be great. <laughs> and, then, and look at the room I got. That's what I wanted. So you, it, it sets up just like you want as far as your front end sitting on it. Right. I can go back all the way to there if I want, but my front end is going to be. Yeah. It's going to have plenty of room. Yeah. That's going to be so cool. This baby's coming together pretty quick, really. If you think about it, you know. Yeah, I can sit I'm starting from nothing. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Once the front end's all in there, and I can... I like to find a set of wheel adapters, I'll have to look. I can go online and check out and find four out what and they three, cost. Four and three quarters of Chevy wheel pattern. Right. I'll go look and see what a six lug Chevy truck to a five lug Chevy... <coughs> what I can find from one and four. Find a set for. <coughs> so once I free this wheel up, which I haven't done yet, take it apart, free it up like that side. Mm -hmm. Just basically get the bearings back in there and get it so it rolls. Yeah. Then I'll get my rear end in it and I'll have a rolling chassis. There you go. And then you can set that cab on there and start looking at how the cab and the motor and the front end and yeah. everything all fits in. It's going to be good. That's going to be real good. Once I get the motor set in it and the, all the drive train set up in it and I don't I'm gonna take it for a ride even if it don't yeah. have no glass in it or nothing. Well, that's, the way, <laughs> well, that's the way I did, you know, as soon as I didn't I didn't have a floor, I didn't have any windshield. I had to I had mine running where I live I can go out in the quarry out back, you know. Yeah. I took that baby out in the quarry, went riding. That was fun. It's kind of I would think that that front end has got plenty of space too. It's not gonna ball them out. Yeah. There's like the tie rods is going to be lower than they are now. That's just kind yeah. of set in there just to make sure I got plenty of frame clearance. Right. So if it sinks down, if it sinks down an inch or two, yeah. I've got plenty of tie rod clearance. Yeah. That's going to be good, Mike. It's something different. Yeah. I kept looking at it, and, I, and then I was reading about it in one of the books, and the guy said, basically, that looks awful rough riding in one of the books I read, and the guy says, Oh no, it rides like a Cadillac. <laughs> but, you know, it was on a pickup truck he had. Yeah. That is so cool. And them springs ought to be plenty adequate enough for the weight oh, yeah. of the, what's going in there for an engine and stuff. Yeah. There's a lot more leaks in them than...
you know these are really short tires on the front yeah so you, you can gain uh, you can easily gain some inches yeah but I'm gonna lose some inches when the motors in it that, well that's true too. Sag down so and I'm gonna lose when I put the 50s on the back so yeah drop a few inches You would, uh, you got a three-speed to go in it too, don't you? I've got a three-speed that a guy's got that he said he'd sold me. So yeah, you getting bell housing and flywheel yeah, the bell and all the parts. is there, but I don't know if a flywheel and clutch and all that is. So yeah, I've got to investigate how much of a stop a flywheel costs too. You know, it's, I think they're still pretty common. I mean, it's, you know, Chevy parts, so they ought to be around. I'm thinking. Of course, when you put it together, you should have a new clutch anyway, but the flywheel is what I'm kind of wondering about, you know. I don't know if you necessarily need a new one or not. I mean, you can look at your old one and tell if yeah. it's good and get by with it. And, I don't even know if a clutch is there. I know that the tranny and the bell house is there, so yeah. that's what I like to put in at this three-speed. Yeah, that's the way to go. Well, I mean, that's what I like. I like to shift. I like to shift gears. I want this one a little different than that one. Yeah. Well, right. You got That's like me. I got an automatic in the... Rambler, I like having the gears to shift in the hot rod. It would have been a lot cheaper and a lot easier to put an automatic in that hot yeah. rod. You know, put yeah. a put Easy. a put a small block Chevy and an automatic in there would have cost me hardly nothing and wouldn't have been any trouble at all. But I wanted it to be different, you know. That's what I want to do. I've got some wicked wick good ideas for my shock mounts up front. Okay, well tell me about it. Well, basically, I'm going to take and I got a box and all these frames anyway, so I'm going to take a piece of plate. Maybe six inches wide this plate, but I'm gonna come up like this at an angle. Right. And then there's my shock mount. Yeah. And then I also, if I can, uh, once I get the front end on it and adapt it, I'll have it. I can mount my headlights on it. My headlight front and the shock mount. I'm just gonna mount. box the end of the frame in with my friggin' shock mount. There you go. And have it come up at a curve. Yeah. And then from here up. And then your your big grill there is gonna kind of fit down over the, yeah. it all, right? Mm -hmm. So it'll be behind the grill. So I'm figuring that it will be right around where you want a headlight too. Yeah. 
Is the radiator going to fall inside that tube there? Uh, it will fall inside the tube. I measured it. If I cut the flange where it bolts to that front cover right. off, so right. wherever that it's going to drop down through, I got to cut the flange. Right. Then it will drop down in there. Yeah. So I don't have no problems with the radiator going in at uh, whatever height I got to do. That's a right sturdy little rig you got there, you know. Huh? That's a right sturdy rig you got there. The way you got it set up. Well, that's a, I work on heavy equipment, so. <laughs> yeah. I go a little bit, I might go a little bit overboard. I go to the car shows and look at some of these tea buckets and stuff, and they got little tiny mm -hmm. trailing arms, like I've seen an inch it. or three quarter inch pipe and stuff, and that, I just, I don't know, it just looks too wimpy to me. I want something that looks heavy duty. <laughs> when I was fresh out of high school, a boy in the neighborhood built a tea bucket and he bent his own radius rods out of some pipe. Yeah. And he went to get it inspected and when he hit his brakes, his front axle folded under the front end because radius rods just collapsed on him. Yeah. <laughs> he had to go back to the drawing board start over on that one. I do like the old wishbones that split. They're good heavy duty yeah. looking. You know, that's a heavy duty look. Yeah. <coughs> A lot of the radius rods on the rear ends of them are just little tiny things, you know. Right. Yeah. But if I want to do a burn on I don't want them folding up on me. Yeah. You know. That's right. Yeah, so she's got a Daner instead of a Ford. The only reason I didn't go with a Ford rear end, it was uh, five or six inches wider than the front end. Yeah. So if I'd stuck it in there, it would have stuck out. A good three inches more on each side yeah and it this rear end right here is identical width from drum to drum as the front end yeah so we got exactly the same on the front and the back as far as width wise yeah for our tracking everything's identical width from a drum to drum on that to a drum and drum on that it's the same exact width i'll have to get a wheel adapter for the back so i can put my big meaty 50s on there yeah. Unless I get a sudden different wheels. That's easy to do for the Chevy. They're not hard. <laughs> yeah. They're not hard at all to swap over. This will have disc brakes on it. I'm going to do the disc brakes. Oh yeah. Later. Yeah. Right now I'm just going to get it so it's rolling and I'm not worrying about nothing. And when I get ready to do my brakes. Yeah. Then I'll put the disc on it. Yeah. I'll just order the kit and there's a kit that will fit right on these spindles. Yeah, that's what I did. I ordered it. Ordered the kit and. I'll just went on there real slick, you know, yeah. and it looked real good when I got it done. Yeah, so I might as well just do that, and then I'll have the wheel pattern I want. Right. Yep. Give you right what you want. And hopefully I can get them. I'm gonna take that to one of my buddies in wheels. Yeah. And if they are the Chevy wheel pattern, I'm gonna find out exactly what wheel pattern they are. Yeah. That's where I'm gonna have a disc brake pattern on the front. So. Right. They yeah. are 17s, I think. Yeah. Because I was going to use these wheels as rolling stock right there. Yeah. They're 16s. Uh -huh. I went and got two tires of a junkyard to, for rolling stock, and I was going to have them mounted on them wheels. Yeah. And then I got out here looking at it, and I said, man, that don't look like a tire's going to fit over it. And then I went out here and looked at the one that was out there, and it said 16 inch on that tire. Yeah. So they're 16, them are. Them are way bigger, so. I got some 16 inch motorcycle tires if you want to have them and put them on there. If you know if you want those on there just for messing around, I'll give you a couple of. Mine had the old artillery wheels on yeah. it, the 16 inch on it, and uh, I went out and bought me a couple of Harley Davidson tubes, put them on there. But if you want them, mount those up and stick them on, you can. Buck them to them. Yeah, just so I have rolling stock, that's all I was going to do. Yeah. Them have to be 17s, I'm pretty sure. You mount your own tires? I can, I know how. I didn't know if you tended to do yours or not. I got one of those old uh, manual tire mounting yeah. things at the house, you know. And maybe we could do it right over there. Mm -hmm.